Alright everybody, just another quick one uh, on this new uh, pump trowel, if you want to call it that, I've been getting. Uh, it's about 11 inches long. Uh, i tell you who put me onto this was uh, Plymouth Fens, Thomas there at Plymouth Fens, good shout mate. Uh, you get these from uh, Amazon, they're the tenner. Come with a paddle wrapped handle. Bit more cord, sheath, or pouch. Uh, the pouch is uh, it's on the vertical, not the horizontal. But I think that's uh, designed to go on like a strap, like a carry strap, or a rucksack strap that way. You know what I mean? Maybe it's even your, uh, like I say, your arm straps, possibly. But the pouch, not that clever. The pouch. But uh, Plymouth Fens showed off one of these on a quick little video and uh, I thought yeah, you know, that might have a bit of legs, you get a serrated blade there, there's a single bevel, tight edge on one side and it's, you know, it's a workable edge, I wouldn't say you could you'd be carving anything with it, uh, that's not sharp, it's just at an angle. Little nail puller, nut wrench, there's a fixing hole there, and there's a hole there, and there's a hole there, and the handle's hollow, so you could put a shaft on that, you know what I mean? Make it with a paddle or a shovel, or I thought they were alright, and especially considering in, uh, in the UK, where we're not allowed to carry any fixed blades at all. No matter what size or any locking blades, but a camp shovel with a little working edge on, something to cut your cordage and get a little bit of wood cut. You know, could be a, could be a good little uh, alternative bushcraft carry. I wouldn't recommend you go carrying on the streets, man, do you? you know, but it's a little camp trowel. I thought that was alright when he showed me it, and I, th I thought, oh, I'll get one of them. You know. It's like a small version of a, a <coughs> the cold steel shovel, isn't it? The cold steel shovel is. Uh, I've got one. You can uh, you can get a working edge on the blades, but for a little shovel, a uh, trowel, you know, for your shit kit. Excuse the pun, but that's what it's called. And uh, I've got a fold up one in my uh, out outdoor shit kit, toilet kit, right? And it will it will give. Exactly. And I have wrapped my knuckles a couple of times, so, you know, it's, uh, I thought that was good. I thought that was good little, that could be a good little dodge, and, uh, but I'm going to rotate it into a new kit I'm building. And I think that's going to go in it. A British bug out bag. All, all British friendly. So I thought that's a good alternative. Good shout. And I got that off Amazon. I think about ten pound, ten ninety nine. So it's up to you what you do, but you know, when a sharpener along there, get that half half sensible. That is aggressive. That is sharp. That could be a li good little handy usable tool. And nobody could stop you having it. You know what I mean? Nobody'd say, "Oh, you've just got a sharp edge on your trowel, isn't it? haven't you?" Or the holy holy rather, you know the holy holy I showed you, not the sh uh, not the coast deal shovel, the holy holy. Whereas the holy holy does look, it looks offensive. This doesn't look offensive at all because it's just a trowel, you know. Whereas the holy holy is a garden trowel, but it looks just looks like a knife, just looks like a dagger style knife. Whereas that completely non-threatening, isn't it? You know. I thought that might be a good little dodge for us people who are in the air. Uh, going outside, because everybody's got to go. You know, so there you go, just another quick one. Put a good little heads up from uh, Thomas at Plymouth Fens there and uh, Dopey Dog. Good shout. Bit of extra cord, cord is on there. Got some uh, fixing points, hollow, serrated blade. 
single bubble blade on there. Digging materials, uh, digging tool, digging point. Lots of nail puller. Couple of wrenches in there. Get a, get a small uh, small nut and bolt. Pretty handy little thing. There you go. Just a quick one on there, just a little eyes up, just a share it, keep it going along the line. Uh, the bag I'm working on actually is um, the Scottish police were giving advice on uh, the Scottish population to uh, have a, a grab bag, right, with a few little essentials in, right, and they've got a bit of a uh, stum about it. You know, people were saying, oh, they were scaremongering and things like that. Well, just to put my point on that, I, I don't see anything wrong with the police saying, listen, it's not a bad idea to put uh, a torch, some water, a whistle, some winter clothing, a bit of spare food, first aid kit, you know, just the odds, odds and sods that any normal person will have. I don't see anything wrong with it at all. I think it's, uh, they were doing a preparedness month, you know, one of the police drive things. But uh, I'm from an age where we lived through the Cold War, you know. It uh, The government would have had a lot more heavier things than just get a little bag together just in case the power went down or you get trapped out because we get severe weather up here. I think that's where it's where it's more aimed at. The Scottish police just recently with the grab bag is, I think they're expecting uh, a quite a severe winter up here, you know. But, uh, especially on the side that we're on. But that's that's what I'm working towards, and uh, with it being UK, Britain, you can't have any fixed blade, just none at all. You just you you're just looking for trouble. So alternatives, you know. It's uh, could be a possibility, but I'll I'm, you know once I got it in my hands, I thought yeah, you know that has got it's got potential as a multi-use item, which we should really be aiming to carry. Uh, like I say, I don't think the, the pouches are never much are they, you know what I mean? Generally the, the tools are good and the pouches are quite poor. But I think that might be to go up uh, one of your straps coming up from the bottom to the top of your rucksack. Possibly, I don't know. I don't know. But uh, like I say, the pouch, Felco, I don't like Felco too toughly, but I don't know how many times that'll end up going in and out of there before that might fail. You could just bolster it up, couldn't you? Get those little, you know, little thin plastic chopping boards from the pound shop. Just tape it round there and give it a sleeve. Something like that. But, maybe it's a bit pricey at a tenner. You know what I mean? But I'd be happy to pay a fiver for it. But if you, unless you don't get those fold-up sofas in the pound shop, they're around a fiver at a tenner. So, I just thought, yeah, I'll give it a go. And I don't know how I spent eight minutes talking about a, a, a shit shovel. <laughs> a camp patrol shit kit uh, so I'm up there you go just thought uh, just thought I'd give you a tabletop view of that and, and a thanks to Plymouth Fence uh, you know because this is a good thing about the YouTube and the community that we're in it's uh, it's not one up my ship at all it's just uh, it's just localised general sharing of stuff isn't it you know somebody might say oh I've got one of them don't, don't get it you know I'll do that. I'm quite truthful with the kit that I buy. and uh, But I've had some good heads up from some lads on, YouTube, on the YouTube channels that follow me and that I follow. Uh, like I say, Mad Dog Andy there, Mad Dog Survival. He, um, I quizzed him a while back about DD stuff, right? Because like I say, being in Scotland, we do get uh, quite severe weather. You know, me other bashers, man, they were just breaking, you know? The severe ones you buy, tops and that. And I'd always looked at DD kit, but I just thought it, for a tarp it was expensive. But he said, if you do a lot of outside work, DD uh, tarps, pound for pound, you know what I mean? That's the way to go. And I haven't looked back. Just completely sold on DD kit now. Not all of it's brilliant, you know what I mean? The little headlights that I got, uh, they're for indoorsy type thing, them. They're, they're just cheap, cheap looking, you know what I mean? But uh, they're, they're tarps, like I say, can't beat them. So you get some good heads up from the lads on this YouTube channel, uh, um, YouTube community. I suppose that's what it's all about. And uh, I'm not political, I'm not political at all. But well done those people on the environment. Keep it up. Keep it up. Uh, yeah. 
So yeah, that's something that people miss about us lads in the bushcraft and uh, survivalists. We are conserve, conserve, we're into cons conservation, heavily into conservation, you know. Be a long time gone, but there you go. Eyes up on that. Possible contender, maybe it's a bit pricey at a tenner, but for a tenner, you get, if it's a good utility tool, which is no reason why it doesn't seem to be, I mean, it's made, you know what I mean? It's got no bend in it. That could be maybe it's worth a look at. Maybe it's a bit pricey at the tenner though, like I say, but, you know, could be a handy little tool. Good heads up, uh, Plymouth fans. Thanks, mate. And to everybody else who gives me heads up on things and little bits and pieces that I buy on sort of semi-recommendations or heads up. 